Hi, my name is Akila Clark of Nora Magazine, and we're here with Malik Jared of Eats, the fashion brand. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So we're here to learn, you know, a little bit about yourself and your background. Tell me about your life growing up. Um, so I'm Malik Jared, 25 years old. Okay. Born and raised in Washington, D.C. Um, I grew up. Um, I grew up a pretty regular life. Um, my, my mother, my aunts raised me, my grandmother raised me. And then um, I stopped playing football when I was like six and I would say that changed my life. That helped shape me as, a, uh, as an individual, as a young man. And it just taught me a lot of things about life that I still carry in life as far as like leadership skills and things like that. So um, I would say my, my young life was just the same, was same as everybody else's uh, growing up in DC. What part uh, in, of DC? In, in the city, uh, Northeast. Okay. But um, yeah, I just played sports. I gravitated towards sports, and that's what kind of shaped me, you know, into the man I am now. He said you learn leadership through sports. Mm -hmm. So you were a natural born leader, probably. Tell me a little bit about your personality. Yeah, I'm just, that's, that's my personality too. I'm a, I'm a leader. When you, I always play quarterback. When you're young, the quarterback is not the person, you know, when you're young playing football, the quarterback is not the, uh, the person with the best skills uh, because most of the time we can't even throw the ball. Okay. So you just want somebody that you can trust on, somebody that's uh, responsible for, you know, just not fumbling the ball and handing it to the mm -hmm. running back. That's a big responsibility and at that same token, you have to learn how to be a leader too because mm -hmm. you're still the quarterback. Even though you're six years old, people still look at you like you're the quarterback, like you're supposed to act like Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. So right. early on, that was, um, that was always easy for me to do. I never had a problem with that. When it came to picking teams in the playground, I was always a captain. So I was just, I always been a leader, but I also know how to uh, follow and look and listen because I didn't just, I wasn't just naturally born. I saw people like my brother or other players that were older than me leading too. So mm -hmm. I learned a lot. Were you social? Um, yeah, I'm very social. I always been like, well, actually, yeah. I always, I used to be way more social. Just like the older I get, the less social I become. Really? Actually, Are you that's, just that's probably now? Uh, <laughs> most of us. That's probably most of us though. Right. But yeah, I always been social. I always had a lot of friends. Um, I wasn't really like outgoing, making friends, but I was just wherever I was, you know, just I feel like I always attracted people just like me, whether it was like two or three people, or it was like 10, 12 people. So, yeah, I would say I was always social. In high school, I could sit at anybody's table at lunch and, you know, have a conversation with them. So in com comparison now, you say you're, you're not as social, but that personality is still there. So do you find yourself outgoing and as outgoing as you were? Sometimes, like when I'm uh, like out of town and stuff, like here it's like, it's like I, I developed social anxiety because really? before nobody knew who I was, so I was just, I was just regular. So now it's like, I can't even, I can't move the same now. So it's not, it's not the same. Cause ra rather with me just being able to sit, go in the room and just sit and chill and just listen and catch a vibe, mm -hmm. everybody want to focus their attention on me when I walk in the room. Now okay. that's, that's never, uh, how it, that's not how it was. You know? So even though you were really social, you had a lot of friends, yeah. now you have a somewhat of a fame, right? Yeah. Um, in your city. So you find yourself a little bit more introverted. Yeah. Is, is it not comfortable or? Um, I'm, I'm getting used to it. I wouldn't say it's not comfortable, but it's just new. So it's just new for me. I mean, it's, it's new for anybody. Imagine, you know, just usually just going in and just talking and shaking and moving however you want, you know, versus now when you go in, everybody's coming to you, everybody wants something from you, everybody looking at what you know. Do you find yourself um, a little more aware for safety reasons as well? No, I don't worry about that. Okay. I'm just like, my whole life, I'm, it's not like I'm, I'm big and bad or anything like that, but I'm just, I'm truly a child of God. So anything, whatever happens to me, anything that goes on, it's because it's supposed to happen. And I know the Lord's my shepherd, so I don't worry about any of that. I'm spreading love positivity in my community, so there shouldn't be no room for any type of hate. We never had any problems at any of our events with my team, me, or, you know, people with themselves. Mm -hmm. You wanted this e-cloud and you kind of like know what's going on here, so I never even thought about that. I don't even think about should. that. You yeah. should. I was just wondering. <laughs> so were you always an entrepreneur? Um, yeah, I used to sell uh, snapbacks in like 2008. Like when they first, before like, they were selling snapbacks in shoe stores and clothing stores and all of that. Mm -hmm. We was wearing snapbacks in DC. I used to go get them from the market, market up the street, 
and they was like uh, eight dollars, nine seven for like twelve, fifteen dollars, depending on like which college team it was and how, right. how much people was feeling it. And the thing about the market it was everybody knew where it was, and everybody knew they had the hats, but the dude in the market didn't let everybody in. But I'd go up there by myself, and he'd let me in, and I'd buy some hats and flip them. Why didn't they let everyone in? Because you're supposed to have like a, uh, it's like a wholesale market for real, for real. So you're supposed to have like a uh, business license and everything. Okay. And I was, I was like 14, 15. Oh, we good, we good. Um, I don't want to plug that. <laughs> so, okay. You want to edit that out, right? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Okay. And you said you needed a business license in order to go into the wholesale yeah, market. Yeah, you supposed to have a business license to go in there. And I didn't have anything. I just knew that's what hats were because one of my buddies had told me that's what they were. And he actually let us in one time. And it was, and I know it was like when people would try to go up there with their friends because in the summertime, people, you know, rarely by themselves. They used to try to go in there with their friends and didn't let them in. I guess because they probably thought people was like stealing and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just go up there so by myself. So what was it about you? I don't know. I went in there and I act like I was supposed to be there. That's like the art of finesse. When you just act like you're supposed to be there, when you act like you're doing what you're supposed to do, when you can, when you, when people can tell that like you're trying to get over, or, like when people can tell, like people can tell, right? You know what I'm saying? Like if you eating in class, the easiest way to get caught is trying not to get caught. Just eat it, and you might not even get caught. That's funny. You know what I'm saying? So like that's that's the whole art of finesse. Like I've been developing that since like elementary school. Just act like you, just act like you belong. You know, if you make it backstage somewhere, at home, Get all bubbly ass, somebody might, might ask you where your past at. Right. You're supposed to just act like you belong there. So I used to walk in, and just nod my head, and act like, you know, I, I can't even do some business. I can't even shop. Was it a certain dollar amount that you spent that probably separated you from your peers? Nah, because they probably was buying a lot of hats too. They was like only, it was only $8. We were getting paid summer jobs. Everybody was getting like $380 every, I don't know if it was like every two weeks or every week. Mm -hmm. so everybody had some money, like. We, and we had nothing spending on with food and clothes and stuff. So tell me how you transferred the hat business into what is now Eat Today. I didn't really transfer that to that. I mean, it was just a, it was just like a little hustle. I had a million hustles since then. What else? Tell like, me about something else. Selling hats to um, everybody, like so candy and stuff like that. Um, it was just a million ways, like wintertime, snow. Uh, cut grass in the summertime. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I had so many hustles, but that was probably like the first time I can remember like just going hand in hand like, like that. But um, what actually led to eat was my photography. I was just doing um, photography, and like I said, I was just doing my thing. I was going back stage, stage all the shows, or getting in the media pit, and just taking pictures. And um, that's how, that's what led to eat because I was at Broccoli City Fest taking pictures of uh, like Willow Smith Future and Erica Badu and like um, different websites with like taking the pictures off my Instagram and using them for their like Broccoli City coverage I guess mm -hmm. and then that's when I seen it and, they, and everybody was like man I was kind of mad because I, they, none of them gave me my credit none of them told me I was going to use my pictures mm -hmm. but that's it when I, um, yeah but that's when and I knew I needed a watermark but everybody was like you need a watermark you need a watermark so then I made a watermark and then that's what led to eat because people liked the watermark so then they was like you should put that on a t-shirt. Ended up putting it on a t-shirt for like a couple of my friends. So Eat was, was like, the company oh. for photography? Yeah, it was always Eat. That's what Eat started with photography. Are you still doing photography? Uh, I got a photo shoot about to happen as soon as this over. So yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so from what I'm hearing, there is no excuse. It sounds like you never made excuses for yourself. You always found a way and you always either had something going on or reinvented something that you had going on, you know, for your prosperity, right? Yeah, that's true. So a lot of times I could use excuses. A whole lot of times. Yeah. I'm not even supposed to be here right now. I'm not supposed to be on this interview. If, you know what I'm saying, if I was let excuses get me down. Right. I was, uh, I would probably just been getting out of jail. So, yeah, never let excuses. Like, I haven't been through hell and back everything. But one thing I would tell people is necessary, like, all the mishaps, failures, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't always a perfect person. Like I said, I got in trouble. I did my dirt. But... You know, you just learn from it, you bounce back. I was never the type of person to lay down. That's what I think it is. And I feel like I learned that from sports. Cause I don't, like just with me being a part of the organization I was a part of, the Beacon House Falcons, that was my neighborhood team. We didn't lose any games, you know what I'm saying? I played, I played for the organization probably eight years from six years old to yeah, like 14 years old. And I probably lost five games. Mm. So that taught us how to be winners, you know? I walked through life, even when football season was over, like I, 
like I was supposed to win. I didn't feel like I was better than anybody else, but I'm supposed to win. So I feel like that mentality never left me. So every time I get knocked down, it's just it's just a matter of getting up. And I, I never got comfortable, you know, when I was down. And I've been, my senior year alone was crazy, just trying to graduate. I was taking 21 credits. I got evicted. Um, I had no job. Nobody wanted to give me a job because I was, I had a felony on my record. And I was like going back and forth to court facing five years, you know what I'm saying? All the while trying to graduate. And thank God I graduated on time. But it's like, all that's necessary because that made, that put me where I'm at now. That all like, it's so crazy how like, it's a series of unfortunate but fortunate events that led to this. Cause I only started, I only started taking photography serious because that's all I had was my camera. I had, how did you even get into photography or where did you I met this girl, I met this girl my junior year, my junior year of college. Oh, college. Yeah, college. And so when I went in her dorm, she had a camera and I just picked it up and I was just messing with it all the time. But I can remember like even when I was a baby, my mother used to always had like the little disposable cameras around the house and I'd mess with her. And she's like, you're gonna be a photographer one day. And so that was like before I knew like you could be a photographer, before I knew about any professions, you know, I, could, I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, Police officer, fireman, dentist. I was like photographer because that's what my mother told me. But then I kind of like let go of that though. But then once I met her, I kind of got back into it. You know, I just took off like from that point on. I just always had a camera, so that's how I got into it. But then um, I lost everything I had. I had like I had everything. Anybody in Virginia State between 2010 and 2014, I was a nice dresser. I just had everything and. Um, Something happened where I lost all of that, and then all I had left over was my camera. So I was like, this, this must be what I'm supposed to be doing. Was that the eviction that you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. So I got my house, my house got raided, and they just, they took everything. Wow. And um, I, all I had was my camera left over, because that's what I had on me at the time, because I wasn't in when none of it happened. But that's all I had on me at the time, and that's all I had left over, so I was like, this is how I'm supposed to eat now. It's my only way to eat. I'm, Is I was, that where eat came from? No, nah, I mean eat was. I was, that eat was just like always a nice been. Transition, though. That was that was my senior year, right? That was my senior year. So my, my I started. Oh, I started saying college? yeah. I started oh. saying eat my freshman year just from being broke. Right. Like, I'm always gonna eat good no matter what. And that's kind of what led me to make those bad decisions. I was like, no matter what I'm gonna do, like no matter what, I'm always gonna eat good. I'm gonna eat whatever I want. My friends was going to Chick Fil A one day. I had no money, I, and after that, I just went to my room. I was like, no matter what, I don't care what I gotta do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to eat whatever I want. If I want Outback five days a week, I'm going to go to Outback five days a week. That was like a thing in college. Mm -hmm. I went to Virginia State when you had too many restaurants and all that. But I was like, yeah. So I did whatever I had to do. And those decisions led me to, led to, that was my freshman year. And I was doing my thing. And by my senior year, everything shut down. And all that was just, all, everything was shut down. My whole life turned upside down. You know, I was cruising. I was getting good grades. Um, party and money, everything, and then it just all shut down. Did you finish? Yeah, I finished on time and everything. I got it in four years, through all of that. Yeah, I still did it. So that was a blessing. That's the determination. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I didn't. I couldn't stay there. I know that. Once <laughs> I knew I had, to, I knew that was, that had to be my last year in Virginia. So I had to finish right then and there. Talk about your college life, because it sounds like you had some very traumatic and also, you know, really highlights while you were in yeah, college. Yeah, college was lit. I, I, I advised everybody to go to college. Like, I didn't know what I even wanted to major in, but I just knew I had to go to college. I wasn't about to graduate and be stuck here with no plan. Right. Because then you just start working a job and then they give you a promotion. And Where did you get your degree in? So, you know, you're doing some whatever. Um, liberal arts, mass communications, journalism. Okay. So I'm, I was always good with my words. I'm a good writer. And uh, that's, what I, that's what I chose. Like, I, I didn't even see the campus or anything. My first day on the campus was orientation. As soon as I got the orientation, you had to pick your major. And I just looked on the sheet and I just picked some. So to, you know, the young, you know, men and women that are coming up and are trying to make that decision about college, what would you say to them? Just go, it'd be the best vacation you ever took, but don't just go, you gotta finish. It's gonna be very expensive. That's why I'm gonna call it a vacation. Mm -hmm. Because you also wanna have fun. So, right, I like um, that. I've never heard that analogy and I think- It's the best vacation you'll ever take in four years. And it's gonna change your life. I haven't used anything I learned in the classroom from college, but 80% of who I, like what I've turned myself into since college, I've used from being at college. Whether right. it was networking, 
um, different events on campus, stuff like that. Like college was essential. Like, if I didn't go to college, I wouldn't have met her. She wouldn't have that camera. I wouldn't be doing this interview. And it was just the best time of my life. And I understand like a lot of my friends, like we came deep, a lot of my friends, you know, they didn't graduate with me. Most of them did, the, the majority of us did, but some of them didn't. And they always say like, man, you know, we should have stayed there with y'all, you know? And that was my thing. I wasn't really like, really super pressed to be a writer or a journalist or get a degree. I, just, I wanted to stay at the party, so I got good grades. I had the perks to it, yeah, to the I, education. I wanted to, I wanted to keep partying, so I made sure my grades was tight. And um, yeah, I had a blast. Like, college was the best time anybody gonna have. I, don't, I can't see myself laughing as much, like nothing, being that, that happy over four years anywhere else. Did you have a family support system? Yeah, my family supported me all the way. Okay. I never had like, everybody supported me all the way. I never had like, none of that, you know? I never experienced that. So I, don't, I can't really relate to what people say. They, you know, I did this on my own, so I'm all I got. And all my teachers told me I wouldn't be nothing. All my teachers told me I would be like, they thought I was gonna be the president, for real. So that's the leadership that's yeah. in you. Yeah, elementary school, they thought I was gonna be the president. I was. I was my I was my uh, school president in fifth grade. I mean, no, sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And even like my middle school teachers, like even me goofing around when we used to have like a little one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. conferences with my mom. And my teachers they used to always, you know, speak very highly of me and tell me like the influence I had on my classmates and things like that. That's why I need to stop playing and how important it was for me to just for me to you know be a good student for the class to excel. Not that I was a big distraction. It was just like. I it's that leader. leadership again. Yeah, so what you did, it kind of vibrated throughout the, the yeah. class and your peers. Right. Yeah. So I think that's really important. But as far as like support, yeah, my family always had my back. Anything I say, like they they gonna rock with it. Like I never to them, I can't, I can't have a bad idea or anything like. But what about, it's not like you know I'm, I'm like I don't know like the leader of my family, but like they always like. They just see what I'm doing, and I always been different, you know. Not even with them just comparing me to other family members. I just always been. I don't know. You gotta ask them. <laughs> but we have to do support, that one day. Yeah, I always been feeling the support from whether it's from my family, the city, whoever. I, I, well, I was about to say, what about a mentor? Have you? Never, do you have a mentor? No, I don't have a mentor. But it's just you know different people I look to, and I just take things from, and check on me, you know, and I appreciate that. But. Like a steady mentor to my car, and just like, man, what about this? I ain't really established that yet. It's, it's plenty of people I know I could reach out to. Do you feel like you want just, or need one? Um, Would it be nice? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I never had mentorship, so I don't know. Just somebody you said to talk to or get advice from. But what about yourself? Are you, or would you consider yourself a mentor? Yeah, I'm a mentor by, uh, by default. You know, people make me their mentor. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. When people come up to me and say, man, and you know, people cling on to me and they make sure they're around me all the time. So unconsciously, yeah, I'm a mentor. But as far as me, like, no, nah, I mean, and I never, I don't feel like that's a void missing either. Because I never, people always ask me all the time, like, who's your, uh, who you look up to? Like, who's your role model? And things like that. And it was like, it's not my mom. It's not like really nobody. And my mother don't know too much about this industry, but you know, I'm, I'm a free thinker and I feel like I'm right where God put me at because I'm on point with everything. Like when situations arise, conflicts, whatever, I just know how to deal with everything. You know? right. I'm just on point. It's like I'm a super PR, like my own PR as, as well too. But as far as like mentoring, like I never needed anybody to show me the way once God put me on the path. So. It's like I trust in that. Mm -hmm. That's my mentorship, God. I, I feel it. And I definitely know that you're walking with God because you know, you're having success yeah. in many different ways. So tell me about that process though of EAT. So the process of developing, creating it, you know, everything. Yeah, so um just eat just always been a like the motto, just from like paid in full or just being from the hood, being in the streets or whatever. Like eat, you gotta eat, you know what I'm saying? When, but when the dudes, actual clothes, when you're, you know, that creative process. Oh, oh, like creating process. the clothes. Um, yeah. not, oh, so like, I was just like, um, the first, my first shirts I got embroidered, and it was this dude, and he was like kind of really spending me on when it would be done. He told me it's done Wednesday, I'm gonna get until Sunday. So that was like a whole process. And then um, I was like, what if I could just get embroidered patches? So I looked that up, 
I live for like iron on patches and stuff like that. And I got my own made. And then when it came to like the design and everything, um, I don't know, I just took the patch and I was just like, put it upside down. And I just put it upside down. And that and was it. Yeah, hey, I don't know why. I just did it. And then people kept asking me why it's upside down. Then I had to think of an explanation for it uh, after that. Like, Do I you have one? Yeah, so since it's elevated all the time, it's a message and it's a motivating, inspiring brands for you. So any of my clothing items from I Level Down is gonna be upside down. Because if you're ever having a bad day, your body language might have you looking down anyway. And if you see it eat, it's gonna tell you pick your head up, elevate all the time. And you know, on anything I level above you, you know, you can't see that. So it's for everybody else. If it's a eat on a hat or whatever, it's gonna be always right side up. For you. Yeah, because it's for it's the message for for the people, for everybody that's look, looking at the hat. Right. And so, um, and then the colors, I didn't make my logo. My man Michael Caldwell made my logo, and we've been friends since like beyond the sandbox, like before you can go outside. Mm -hmm. So um, he uh, just made the logo. He picked the colors, and then the rest of the people was like, "So why you picked the colors?" And then. I ain't never asked him, I just like the logo. So I was like, you know, it's the primary colors, the first colors everybody ever learned. So with eat being universal language, everybody in the world must eat to survive. And anybody that can see color knows these colors. It's like a marketing scheme and it's just a good way to attract people. Basic, and fundamental, you walk and with, attractive. Yeah, when you walk in with eat upside down in your shirt, somebody's gonna ask you, what's, what's all right, so what's this? Because if it's a regular upside down, okay, your shirt just say eat. Right. If it's upside down, anybody, hold up. What's going on? What's eat? And then you got a chance to, I don't know, hopefully you can save somebody's life when you tell them if you don't eat, you die in the street. Elevate all the time. I'm most curious about your marketing strategy because before I met you, before I knew you, I was seeing eat everywhere. So it made me second look like, who is this? You know, where is this coming from? Who is this person? And mm -hmm. tell me about how That's you That's why I that. tell people like it's God's work because I don't know why I'm so on point. I never had a plan for anything. I never read a business book marketing book, never went to a marketing class, never did any of that. Like with my, with my promotion, I, and it's kind of bad, and my team like always get on me because they want to be, they want to stay, you know, up to date with like everything that's going on. But all my marketing, all my promotion, everything is spur of the moment, it's whatever I think about. Like, I don't know, when I get a hat, like when I get a hat, like say like one of my artists, Carla, she made this hat, she made this hat, and it was like the DC Metro hat and it had like the Metro map on the bill with a hat. And so when she sent me a picture of it, I was like, dang, this is a nice hat. She was just like trying to sell them real quick. We had a pop-up shop coming up because she was going to LA. I was like, dang, this is a nice hat. These are like $500. She was like, 500 And I was like, yeah, these like, we gonna sell these for like $500. And she like, I don't know about that. You know, I'm just trying to make some money before I go out of town, whatever. I was like, all right, don't worry about it. They're gonna be, uh, I was like, just uh, make them 250 And then she was like, 250 I was like, if you don't sell for 250 by the time you go out of town, I'm, I buy them for 250 So I didn't know how I was going to sell them at that point, you know what I'm saying? But I just went on Twitter and I was like, yeah, custom one on one hats, 250 And then um, I put it on Twitter instead of Instagram. Because Twitter, like, people like be on Twitter. And I got a lot of, like, haters on Twitter. They're not even really haters, but I got, like, trolls on Twitter. Okay. Because, like, you got to meet me before you can tell me you hate me. And then, um, so I went on Twitter because that's where they, that, that's where they, that's where they hate at. You know what I'm saying? That's where the publicity at. That's where you could get it, get it going. And right. you can start something. You could drop a bomb on Twitter, have a whole midday thing happen. Mm. So it was like 12 o'clock, and I dropped them. Sure enough, people was like 250. What 250? So, but it was happening how I wanted it to happen. But to everybody else, it's looking like, oh, you know, this is it's backfiring. You know what I'm saying? To most people, it look, it probably looked like that. Right. But I'm sitting behind there, like on my phone, like smiling. I'm like, these ones about to sell. <laughs> everybody talking bad about them. Controversy. Everybody sales. talking bad about them, and there's people defending me, saying, oh yeah, I pay this for Gucci, and yeah. I'm like, these ones gonna sell. Watch. I'm just wow. sitting back, letting the whole thing, like the whole fight happen. And then one of them sell. I posted sold, and then another one sold, sold, and then. At that point, it was I was just like, it's one more left, and then everybody knows, everybody in the city, like, it's a thing now, you know what I'm saying? It's not trending on Twitter, but it's trending within, you know, our network, our community. People right. are talking about it, because now it's on Instagram, and I didn't even put it on Instagram. Oh, see? So people posting on Instagram, defending me on Instagram, letting everybody know, like, it's news now. Like, he on Twitter trying to sell his hats, and people giving him flack because they 250, and, you know, it's black people, we're supposed to support our own, y'all, go on Gucci and do all this. It was that whole thing going on. 
And so, yeah, we sold all three of them, $750. Like before two o'clock, I started at 12 o'clock. What's next? Do you have any projects that you're working on? Um, We've been like, uh, like I said, like I, I haven't really been planning anything. I'm, I'm not really a planner. So what's next for me and my team is we just gonna lock in. And like, I think I'm gonna just, you know, like rent like a big ass house somewhere far away. And we can just, no TVs, and we can just lock in, really plan out how we want to um, take over, take over other cities. And so, um, what that's, is the that's big goal? Like, um, the big, long term. My biggest goal, my biggest goal, the number one thing I want to happen before I leave this earth, I want a charter school. A charter school? I want a charter school for leaders, young leaders. They do like the middle school range, sixth to eighth grade. I want a charter school exposing to different mediums, art. It's a shame that I didn't have a camera in my hand until my junior year of college. So maybe there's more kids out there like me that just not even exposed to it, that just need that exposure. Absolutely. It's very admirable. Okay, so we're about to play a little game. These are the hard questions. That's cool. So I'm going to read these off. What is your favorite quote? Um, you can plant a seed or, you know, you can buy a plant or you can plant a seed. Favorite quote? I just thought of that last week. That's my favorite quote now. <laughs> it's your quote. <laughs> um, your favorite book? The Bible. The Bible. Favorite pastime? Um, playing football. Most memorable moment in your childhood? I'm trying to think the first thing that comes to my mind. Don't think. You just got to spit it out. The most memorable moment, I remember um, being in the alley around Berry Farms. My grandmother used to put a crate on the, uh, my grandmother used to put a crate on the, uh, on the electric pole, and we used to be out there all night shooting like free throws in the line. All the like all the kids that lived in that that alley park, the alleyway. Stacy, Mo, my cousins, like we all used to be out there like real late at night, and just shooting hoops. Uh, well, it wasn't a hoop, but it was like you know the little milk crate, and we just be made out it there to one. Taking turns shooting. Yeah. Relationship status. I'm single. Something that you want to do that you've never done before. Um. I don't know, if I want to do something, I already did it. If I wake up and I want to do something, I'm going to do it. That's a cop out. Name nah, something really, else. I'm, I'm, I'm so serious. Like, I'm like, people be like, you know, what do you want to try? Well, I'll be like, I don't know, but as soon as I figure it out, I'm going to go there. Like, the next week. Like, I don't, I don't waste no time. Like, I, I, I ain't have nothing. So now I take advantage of everything. Like, I'm, I'm living. <laughs> Brand that you want to outshine? Nobody. I want nobody. I want eight to outshine eight. That's gonna be my next plan. One thing about you that nobody knows. Um, nothing. I'm not. I'm not a secretive person. Everybody know everything. Well, no. Somebody knows something. Everybody knows something about me, so it equal up to everything about me. You know what okay. I'm saying? I don't have like. I don't have that one secret. I don't have. It. But everybody know like. Most people don't know, most people don't know is that like, I don't really like, I'm cool with not talking. Like, I'm cool with like being silent. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with you not like saying nothing to me. Like, I'm pretty cool with that. Like just say what's up. Like I'm cool with that. Like people, I feel like some people, a lot of people think they gotta like talk to me and wrap me up and say, man, you know, I'm so proud. Like I know that like, you know what I'm saying? Not, not like I know, but I recognize, you know, real recognize real, and I can just feel people's energy. So when people just come around me and say, man, thank you for what you're doing, that's enough. Right. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people feel like they got to just like do a lot, say a lot. I'm just a real simple guy. <laughs> Last question. What do you say to a little boy or girl with a dream? Um, one day you're going to have to stop dreaming. One day you're going to have to wake up and make it happen. You know what I'm saying? I, I never dream too much. You know, I dreamed about it. I don't know, I, I never dreamed too much. Anything I ever wanted, I dreamed about it definitely. But then, you know, you gotta turn the dreams into passion, because passion is the fuel mm. that's gonna make the dream happen. But a dream is just a dream if you keep dreaming. So that's why I wanna tell the kids, be ready to wake up. I like that. Well, yeah. thank you. No problem, thank you for having me. Hey, one, one more question. You said that, uh, when she asked you about how you were building me, said that you were being guided by God. Yeah. How did you guide you? So when I was, um, so when I first graduated uh, college, I, I stopped working in 
of restaurants. I started doing hospitality because I was a photographer. I wanted a flexible set schedule so I could still be able to take my pictures. So I was um, I was a waiter, and then uh, so I was waiting tables for about eight months, no, probably like six, eight months, and then my mom had lost her job, so I had got another job working at another restaurant. And so I'm working two days a week, and I'm working two jobs, six days a week, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. And both of them, you know, like, I'm a waiter at both jobs, so I'm on my feet all day. The only break I really had was like that hour in between, I go to my car in the parking lot, take a nap, you know, just chill, whatever. So then, um, after doing that, I was just like, you know, I was making ends meet and everything like that, but, you know, I'm sitting back with a degree. I'm a funny guy, like, people love me, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a good photographer. I would just start praying, you know? I was like, you know, God just put me on the path that you paid for me. I know this not what I'm supposed to be doing. But in the back of my mind, I was always just really asking to be a photographer. And it took me a minute to, like, really realize that I wasn't even praying right, and I had to switch up. I had to switch things around, so. I let go of photography, you know, I was just like, I stopped thinking about that when I prayed. And I was like, just put me on the path that you paid for me, like whatever it is, because I know I'm not supposed to be, you know, a wait, I'm not, I know I'm not supposed to be in restaurants all day making tips, you know what I'm saying? Because I've always been like, like a social person. Like every social media site that ever came out, I had success on. Like, some people still come up to me and remember me from Vine. I had Vine fame before I was even like, Instagram or Eat or none of that, but, that was like my first taste of fame and I didn't like it. So I deleted my, I deleted it. So you don't got, like fame. I got the 20,000 followers. I was doing all this in college, right? Mm -hmm. I got the 20,000 followers. I came home for the first time and people knew who I was and they thought I was a comedian. But really I was just on Vine, like just being bored in college. And so after that, I, I just deleted it. So um, yeah, all that kind of like led up to it. And I was like, just put me on the path you paid for me. I know I'm not supposed to be doing this. So, you know, stay, stay, stay with that prayer. And then sure enough, you know, doors started opening. My friends kept asking me to put something, put my logo on the shirt. And I never wanted to do it. I was like, man, I'm working all the time, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm shooting people brands. I'm not trying to get in that lane. I'm, I'm the photographer, dude. And so eventually just did it, like, you know? So that's why I knew, like, I was just, it was just all God's planning. And then I was finally on the path he paid for me. That's why, like, now I don't question anything, new opportunities. I don't question none of it. Now I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ. Now I throw my own events now. Um, I'm a community leader now. I got a nonprofit now, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, I, I just never limit, to, I, I, I don't limit myself to anything anymore. You know what I'm saying? I just trust that whatever's for me, because mm -hmm. God got it for me. Man. Everything I need, I already got. Thank you. No problem. So it sounds to me like a lot of the, so you're kind of looking at the past and going, oh, this was God's plan. Yeah, it was necessary, yeah. But how does he guide you in the present? Or does he guide you in the present? Yeah, he got, he, um, so the way God guides me now is just, um, he just, I guess, what, what I would say what is he keeps me humble because a lot of people always tell me that like you're a real humble dude or people that know me forever, they never had to like, they never had to question, you know, my character or anything like that. They, they tell people the same thing, like we always been the same, like nothing's gonna get to him. And that's the truth and that's one thing that I thank God for, like nothing, nothing can get to me and that's, the, that's how I like it. And I think that's me truly humble, um, like good or bad, I'm just, I just always try to stay the same, and I just deal with things. And with my life changing so much in the last two years, I know it's only because of uh, God watching over me that I'm still, that I'm able to stay safe and I'm able to provide for my family and things like that. So he guided me every day. All this is because of him, he can shut it down whenever he want. So would you say you have like a voice of guidance? Yeah, I would say I have, a, I have, um, I'm, I want, like more than a voice of guidance, I would just say that I have like a, like I'm a, like I'm a vessel for guidance, you know? Cause I don't really know what to tell everybody, but if you believe in God and you, and you watching me, then you gotta, you gotta know that it can happen to you too. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just a faithful dude. And a lot of people don't really know what faith is. Faith is not something that you can really come halfway with. It's not 85%, can't, can't have 
faith and depend on luck. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that's how I am. I'm I'm all in. I'm all in. Like you got it, it takes 100% faith, no type of doubt at all. And that's what that's what continues to guide me because I don't know. Like I said, but a lot of people just you can't have faith and worry. You know, they, they don't even go together. Because when you're worrying, you're hoping on a miracle. Faith, you depend on God. And that's the way to go. Whether it goes the way you want it to go or not, that's how it's supposed to go. That's how God wants your life. So you got to figure out what's next. You know what I'm saying? But I would like to say I'm a vessel more than a voice. People, I want people to be able to see me, see what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and take little things from what I'm doing and be able to apply that to their life. And the most important thing I want people to take away is just faith. Like, you gotta learn, you gotta know how to have faith. It's not enough just to say I'm faithful. You gotta know what it is. You know, faith is jumping off a bridge. <laughs> Sometimes you have to. And a lot of people don't wanna jump off a bridge. <clears throat> it's not comfortable. Yeah, but if, you know, if everybody jumped off a bridge, then it'll be a million all homages. So it's a gift and a curse. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really like sugarcoat it with the kids. Like, it's not for everybody. You know, everybody's not going to do it. Everybody wants to do it. Everybody think they can, but they just not. So you, you just gotta to. figure out where you where you gonna. You gotta, you know, <laughs> make that choice for yourself. We didn't speak to all homage. What is that to you? So all homage is just like um, it's just who I am. Like you know what I'm saying. All homage is who I am before you meet me. Paying homage is you know paying respects to people. That's, why, that's one thing I want to do. I feel like I do with my photography. When you, when you take a picture of somebody, you capture that moment, it lives forever. And that's paying respect to that person in that moment. So that's where all homage came from. And then um, I'm just all about giving homage. I'm all about homage, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's paying respect, everything I do is paying respect to my city, you know, paying respect to my people, my whatever. Everything is about, you know, giving homage. That's what I respect in return, homage. Mm -hmm. Powerful. I don't, I'm not one of the people that just do what I do to do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit and lie to you and say, you know, I just do me. No, I do this so my grandkids that's not even born yet can eat and their grandkids and so we can change the city so we can have more entrepreneurs. You know, I do this for, I do this for when I'm, when I'm gone, you know. I do this for everyone. All right, final question. Is there one thing that you do every day that you can attribute to your success? Um, I pray every day, whether it's uh, get on your knees and pray, or whether it's um, like, you know, just pray. Like I just posted a picture on Instagram and people, uh, somebody took a picture, they caught me praying in the club. And I was like, post the best caption, but people don't even know, I was just ready to just pray. Like, I be praying, I prayed in the strip club before. I pray anywhere I feel like praying. I just pray. How does it come about? I don't know. My relationship with God different from people's. Like, I, I feel like God understands me, you know what I'm saying? And I got a plan. I feel like me and God got a plan for when I'm going to get right with him, all the way right. And until then, whenever I can be conscious of doing right, I will. And I feel like, you know, I sin. And these kids watch me and things like that, but I don't break the law. So as long as I don't break the law, I'm 25. And I'm gonna stay 25. I'm not gonna let nobody accelerate, you know, my age or maturity level or any of that. I'm, I'm still gonna live my life and take advantage of that because the kids watching that. You can be young, lit, and you don't gotta be Martin Luther King. You don't gotta be, you know, picture perfect every day. You don't gotta do none of that. You can just do your part in society and still be that fun person you wanna be by not breaking the law. And you know, because people always question that or they don't question it no more because now people kind of get in, get in my drift. Like I'm not out here to be number one role model. I don't really care to be a role model. So you are one by default, and you take that responsibility. Yeah, and but I'm just in me, your yeah. own time. And when people when, I, when people first started saying they was like, "What's going on?" Like, hey, like how you uh, in the community and you at the strip club with me? And I'm like, "Cause yeah, I can do that. You can do your part still. Cause at the end of the day, all those people that look at me funny is like, what did you do? What did you do for your community? You still here with me?'" So okay. that, don't make me no less, yeah, that don't make me no less, less of a person because I did something and I'm in this place. I'm in this club that's supposed to represent all of this. I'm just having a good time. It's like everybody else. I'm 25. I didn't ask. I'm not 
I don't want to be y'all mayor, president, you know what I'm saying? I just do what I do, and I understand there's people watching me, so I do right, but I'm not wrong or a bad person because kids watch me and I'm in the club. No, I'm old enough to be in this club. Mm -hmm. I'm the right age to drink, and this is what I'm doing. I don't even post me like drinking or smoking and stuff on Instagram just for that simple fact. But if I want to, I should have the liberty to do that. You're gonna live your life. And yeah. it still goes back to not making excuses. Right. Because even though you live your life however you feel like and you, you need your life, your you part. still You can still do your part, and you know what I'm saying? And that's when, and that's another thing. I, I, I want people, people that's you know in the club or live their nightlife, don't, ever, don't think that you're not a part of the community or you don't make a difference too, you know what I'm saying? You can still do your part. And I feel like a lot of people have been doing that because I've been so versatile with how I move, you know what I'm saying? Been, People not, you know, not really, I wouldn't say afraid, but not cautious anymore about, you know, being involved with, you know, having their lifestyle and being involved. You know what I'm saying? You can be whoever you want to be and you can still help. I agree.